Oh my god. That is just unfortunate. 36 year old Billy Burr. We have an entire case file on him as we are here in Bay St. Louis, Mississippi. The story goes is that at 3.45 a.m., Billy and his two friends, Mason and Tilly, leave the bar on the other side of the Bay Bridge over in Henderson. Now, the bar has been wiped out by Hurricane Katrina and Katrina. The bar is no longer there, but he first drops off his friend, Mason, on that side of the bridge. Mm -hmm. He then makes his way across Bay Bridge, just a few blocks from here, and he drops off his friend, Tilly. 3.45 in the morning, not much is going on. Nice, quiet, quaint, little coastal town. The family then says he would normally take Bay Street down to his home. We're looking at just three, four miles from here to, to get home. There's not many, I, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna say there's any ponds or big creeks to get into. However, there are a few little bayous to where if you're drunk at four o'clock in the morning, there's a potential for a couple of accident locations. Whether you're here on the bay or there's another road that has six or seven potential locations if he might have you know, split the distance or the difference between where Bay is at, where his house is at, and taken a more of a direct route. This really comes into a accident location in my, you know, or an accident scene scenario, in my opinion, versus some of the other ones that we've been working on this trip. Yeah, I agree. The, the notes in there, I picked up on something that he was a real jovial man. Like, it didn't seem like he was depressed. Uh, so I didn't get that, that impression at all. So I'm looking at accident as well. While I was looking at the map, a couple different spots where, yeah, you could just veer off and go right into the water. Yeah, and the vehicle that we're looking for today is a 1988 gold Toyota wagon. Um, Billy himself, he went missing March 23rd of 1991. Father at the time. And it's his granddaughter, who I believe he's never met, is the one that reached out to us here at Adventure for the Purpose and started bringing attention in these case notes to us as to, hey, my grandfather, can, you know, my grandmother's getting older and before she passes, can we just get the answers as to, you know, where he is or where he is not? And she's wanted, whether she's wanted to move or not, it's, it's implied that she hasn't moved because she hopes and is expecting him to walk back through the doors with the note said, and that's, that's heartbreaking. I think what we're gonna do right now, let's just take the drive down Bay Street, let's stop at the first location, and at that location we'll bring you into the entire visual overview of every location we have on our map today to search. We have eight, nine, 10 locations, so fingers crossed, we're gonna be able to bring Billy home to his family today. families who have all but given up on finding their loved ones, this team is a last hope. Civilian divers cracking cold cases for free. These are going to be the locations that we're dealing with today. We have five or six, seven of these. Now, the nice thing right now is we have the tide is going out. And so in the next two hours, we'll be at low, low tide, and then we don't get high tide again until close to midnight. So we'll be on the upswing after that. So most of our search today will be during low tide, giving us an extra foot and a half to three feet. I don't know what the exact difference in tide levels are here. But I'm looking for locations like this. As he's driving this direction towards home, any potential just shh, off the right of the road locations like this. Now. The nice thing is, is we've easily cleared this one. You can see the bottom mm -hmm. of the river right here. Have a pipe here. Yeah, you know, the other thing I was thinking about too, Jared, is, you know, Katrina, when Katrina came through, some of these missing cases down here, I, I just wonder how many of the vehicles were just cleaned up in a mass effort for cleanup down here mm -hmm. that just weren't even checked. It was just, you know, they redredging the canals and, and cleaning up. But, uh, but, you know, there's always the hope that 
that that didn't happen that we do find them. But somebody would have noticed yeah. yeah, exactly. Definitely not a car in there. Though. I could see bottom all the way, well, about quarter or more than a quarter of the way out. If a vehicle is here, yes. But I'm not going to put anything way up there. Yeah. Yeah, and then the other thing I like about this tube iron is this side of it. Yeah. Like, it's just so shallow. You can see just how shallow it gets through here as well. So that's not going to be an issue. And this would be cleaned out constantly. Like if someone came in to keep this canal clear, right. it's just gonna keep being worked out. So anything that was in here, I mean, this is pretty new too, this barrier. Yeah. And I've seen the birds just like walking on here. So that's not deep at all either. Yeah. All right, well, let's go uh, knock out some more of these. Okay. Um, so that, I know I said I was gonna show the overview map, but let's do that. Okay, to give you a rundown of the area, we first start with the bar that's over here. Mm -hmm. Now I don't do a five mile radius of the bar because I know that he crossed over mm -hmm. the bridge here that we were at this morning and this is my new last known location. Mm -hmm. So I have last known location, I do my five mile radius, I also have my home location and I have a five mile radius. Do we know where the first buddy was dropped off? Yeah, he was dropped off over here. Oh, he's so pretty close to the bar. Yeah, then. so he was dropped off close okay. to the bar. Okay. So and then second buddy Tilly was dropped off over here, near whatever court this is over here. His muscle memory pattern and what the family said was he would take the Bay Road or the the Bay Road in okay. order to get home down here. Yeah. So that's where we checked off location number one. Yeah. We're at location number two, and then we're just going to keep checking these little locations on the way down. Now that would then take us to this road here. This would mm -hmm. be the last location. So one, two, three, four, five locations on the way up to his house right here. Mm -hmm. But if we don't find him at any of those locations, we then will come back and we'll work the same direction that he was going. So okay. we don't miss anything. Yeah. So these, these are, I'm, I'm drunk, I'm intoxicated. I'm veering off on that side of the road yeah. and I'm ending up, especially like this one's, you know, a lot bigger. So I'm ending oh, up. Oh, that one's a lot bigger. And so you can see the scale of the car here. Yeah. And so again, like I said, I'm, I'm hopeful for some of those. That's where we're going to find them. Yep. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, not on this side. Yeah. On that side. Let's, let's double check this side over here. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's a little bit more of a like hole. Yeah. Yeah. Let's grab the uh, let's grab the bobber. Little sonar sonar bobber. Yeah, I've never played with that. All right, yeah, let's pull that out. Okay. Okay. I'm just gonna get a feel for a nice little cast here. Oh, that was all right. That seems about center ish in the hole here's what we have okay so it shows where we're at yeah in relation to the world and Thanks, it brother. shows the depth so you're currently at four feet right there oh okay so, i'll reel it in yeah so i'm i'm going to go with a deeper hole over here because okay. I mean, you can kind of see the bank right there but yeah. yeah go ahead and reel it in there and you'll be able to see if we have anything in there and just real slow yeah yeah we're still only four feet yeah but what we'll look for is anything big off the bottom there. Uh huh. Yeah, we've actually used this that actually found a car before. Wow. Using this. Wow. But it's a really good, quick, easy way to identify. So yeah, three and a half feet there. Yep, so that clears that. Okay. All right, let's head to the next spot. Any new news from the family? Any updates or? Yeah, the uh, so the family sent me like four more locations that of interest to them as well. So we'll check our locations and then I'll actually pull up their pin drop locations and see if any of them match the ones we've already done, um, or if we need to go check out a few additional ones for them. Okay. All the way across. Yep. Alright, 
You got the old app pulled up? Oh, I guess yeah, I need to turn it up. Yep. You're at uh, four and a half feet right there. Uh-huh. Coming up on five feet, so it could, it could get deep enough, but. Yeah, right on this side, like I said, I couldn't see the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, you're at five feet even right there. Now, the one thing to keep in mind also, this is not side scan. This is just down imaging only. Yeah. So you have to be right over your target. So the big thing that we're using this for is to identify if we have a pocket that's deep enough that we need to then get regular sonar into. Okay. Or you just have to cast to make sure that you're covering, you know, every three feet or so as you come across it. I'll go so a little right, bit. right there, you're only at three and a half feet. Okay. So way too shallow there. Let it just uh, drift underneath the uh, bridge. Okay. For kicks. Yeah, still only four and a half feet right there. Nothing's popping up. You got some fish under there. Uh -huh. There we go. All right, that one's clear. Yeah, the issue that I have with this one is, although it could be off to the left, more than likely the accident would be on the right-hand side here, though. There's just not nothing going in there. But yeah, let's double check the left one here. Yeah. Oh, there's, yeah, there's a lot of poaching around here and dumping, Byron. There's another deer right down here. Part of it. I got thoughts about poaching. You need to feed your family, it's not poaching. But if you're leaving carcasses, you ain't feeding your family, you're poaching. Yeah, so I'd probably come in from the side over there. It doesn't matter where. Wherever you want to do it. Let me turn my recording on for you. You're a foot and a half deep right there only. Yeah. Yeah, shallow hole. Okay. All right. On down the road. We still have our other main location down there. So three, t two to three more points of interest right near each other. That's it? Yeah, yeah, we've been knocking them out. Here's our other location. And I think that, oh, that's complete, like there's rocks in the center. Yeah, you can see the bottom right there. Yeah, it's two inches deep. I can see rocks over here. Yeah. Let me double, double check real quick. Nobody's behind this. Yeah, nothing on this side. There's oh yeah, no, this is dry over here. Look, more dumping, just dumping everywhere. More more carcass? Yeah, carcasses everywhere. Oh my God, that is just unfortunate. All right, well, let's drive this just a little bit right here, but these were my last two little locations here. And yeah, I mean, side, I, you, but that bird's standing. Yeah, bird's standing And right then there. there's this as well. I mean, I'm just gonna walk this. Yeah, just walk that, I'm gonna, pull up past you and get off the bridge here. And then we'll uh, drive up, I'll pick you up, and then let's go find a safe spot to pull over and then let's pull up the family notes and we'll go from there for what they sent me today. Okay. This is so shallow. It's two and a half feet. Yeah. I can see the bottom it up to this point and then it goes right to sandbar right there. Yeah. So. Not here. Okay. Well, yeah, let's go find a parking lot and okay. let's uh, jump on the computer and dial in a few more locations then. Knocking out those locations definitely was a lot shorter than I even expected. So everything along the Bay Road down here, mm -hmm. everything back along here, a lot of animal carcasses from the ducks to the deer to you know, it's a sad thing on that one. Uh, every location though was just too shallow. We don't have, we have not yet today searched a location that is deep enough for what we're looking for. The family has reached out to me and they've sent me a couple of notes as to some additional locations. So we have covered all of those locations that they've sent us notes to. I mean, there's that, That's that could be viable. Yeah. We haven't searched that one. That's one waterway right there that could be an accident location. Okay, so and I don't know how long, let's see how long this casino's been here. 
So what you do is you come over here and this little map, this little button right here is what will let you then bring it to, all right, we're looking at 1991. So there's, there's 89 here. And that's not giving me a good representation. Let's, there's 98. So casino is not there in 98. So this was a dead end. So that was all open in. And then well, that, that was 98. Yeah. And then you have that one causeway there. And mm -hmm. then uh, you also have that marina here. Again, see, once we're on the water here, yep. we, let's go. I mean, we can get in here. And then, yeah, let's scan all of that. And we'll just scan because, look, there was no houses or anything there. So let's treat this as a I'm done. I'm coming down this road. I'm, I'm just going to say we now have to look at the non-accident scenarios. What else do we have in the area that's within this five mile radius of home that's going to make sense? Yeah. We know that we can't get out of the bay, but we know that this is deeper water. I think that with that review, I think that we honestly have a chance of finding him. It's as sad as it is with all the accident locations taken out. I feel confident that we have a chance in finding him if he did this to himself, that this makes the most sense closest to home in a location that he would know late at night, early in the morning, quiet. Well, I'm super hopeful today. I mean, we've just banged out a ton of potential locations that just turned out to be too shallow. And very hopeful for these new locations based off the map and the imagery and yeah, I just, I see potential in finding them. Well, Captain? Well, we are at three feet here. Let's go find Billy. So this is what I'm going to be more interested in. Because coming up at this white boathouse or whatever is where the casino area starts. So anything down there is of big interest to me. 10 feet deep. Yeah. Okay, I got something right there. I don't think it's big enough. Next to a tire, you can see the tire right there. But possibly something to go double check out. We're looking for a Toyota wagon. Toyota wagon, yeah. Like a station wagon, but it's a mini wagon. It's a mini wagon, yeah. It's, like, not, it's not like a full-size car. No, it's really small. It's uh, like an old, like a Civic-sized wagon. And you're dealing with uh, salt water here. So that's the issue, is it's going to break it down a lot faster than a regular car if it's in this area. Did pick up a tire, though, you see that? Yeah, got a tire. A couple tires. Tires are everywhere, though. Yeah. You said you're just specifically looking for tires. If there's like four tires like laid out where a car would be, like, doo -doo, oh, there's four. Yep. And yeah, that'd be something that would be interesting for sure. Oh, look at that though. Look at that four pattern. And I know it's it's longer. What if those tires pushed away from the frame? Do you see that on that scan? It looked like four four thing right there. Look at that. Possibly. There's at least two. Yeah, you're 22 feet apart. I think it's a big stretch, but I'll, I'll go over it some more for you. And then on the other side, it looked like equally spaced, but spread out. Eighteen feet over. Let's double check that. Yeah, you got that real like interested look on your face, like yeah. intrigued by something. Just want to make sure we rule this out. See, you hit it some directions, and it looks like something. Another direction, you hit it, and it's not.
not sold and convinced as a car or anything of any sort. What's going through my mind is we're dealing with 30 plus years. At the end of this, in a potential location, with like two tires around it. With a little something kind of goes like that. So what, and it's 11 feet deep. So what I want to do is come back and then we'll grab the magnetometer. We'll throw the magnetometer in the boat and I'll just go scan that area and see what type of a reading it gives me. Like I'm just getting the reading of a, yeah, like a steel tire versus a car or something that's under there. So we'll get the other unit, what, what is it called again? The magnetometer? Yeah. Yeah, it give me a nice reading if it's a big metal object the size of a car. Like I'll still pick up the frame and stuff. And it'll give me that reading even if it's buried under the uh, silt and sediment. If I get a big reading like a car, then I'll suit up and I'll dive on it. And we'll start digging around it and see if we have what we actually have down there. Hi there. Hey, this is Jared. Hi. Hi there. So uh, we have been searching the area uh, all day today so far and have not yet found any uh, location um, where, we've, where our vehicle is at. Um, we have been keeping track on a uh, map, so at the end of the day, you know, regardless, I'll make sure that I drop you a link to that, so that way you, you, okay. and your, you and your family can review it. By chance, did you tell you about the pond that's behind someone's house on Lakeshore Road? Uh, let me pull up my map on that one so we can kind of direct me to it so we can talk about it. So, uh, Lakeshore Road, um... Or it's Lower Bay, I'm sorry, Lower Bay Road. Okay. There's like this pond behind these people's house that we've had searched before as like we were told that he could possibly be there in his vehicle is what we were told uh -huh. um that person won't come forward though so um i'm not i think she might have had it halfway checked or something like that yeah and yeah she said that like it, half of it got filled in recently or something yes yes it got filled in after he had went missing or something okay yeah, I, I'm trying to look for any reason that would have taken him, you know, past home. Like I said, you know, we looked at everything between his last known location and home. And then, like I said, we're working the angle of, yeah, he did this to himself or. Yeah. Um, by chance, look, I don't know if y'all were able to check around the Bay Bridge or like by that area of the bar where he went missing. Were y'all able to check that at all? No, and we didn't because, you know, we, we have the information that he dropped Tilly off, you know, so so we know that he yes. made it back over onto this side. And, you know, with the bar closing, you know, there wouldn't have been a reason for him to head back over to the bar if it was closed. Yes, I understand, yeah. Yes, I just hope that, you know, find something because whether or not, like, it was foul play, nobody will truly know. I mean, when you're drinking, you don't know what's running through that person's mind whatsoever. And, I mean, I wasn't born at the time, so I, I can't really tell you how he was. I just know what I've heard. And from what I hear, he was happy. But I don't, you know, I don't really know for sure. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, let me, uh, let me pull up sonar here, and I'm going to jet back to uh, the county boat ramp where our gear is at, and I'm going to throw the magnetometer in. I'm going to go double check that for, uh, you know, for the family and for my search. And then, yeah, I'll, I'll update you guys in a few hours for sure if I don't find okay, anything sooner. Awesome. So I, I, had, I did have a thought about the bar, though, that she brought a good point up. Like, hey, did you check around the Bay Bridge? The reason why I bring that up is because I've forgotten my ID right. and wallet. Uh, you know the bar I've looked at the access points around the Bay Bridge and well it looks like there might be one on the other side it's not like a you know any accident locations sure so that's why I've not focused on any of that okay so but we'll uh, like I said let's go check that and then we can uh, always pull that up and take a look at some of that awesome. yeah so really this is a I said I mean where that target is at in the end of the road and no houses here and if that is my target, then you would just come straight off the end of this. If the tide is going out, I, it would be a perfect spot right there. So explain what this is. It is a marine magnetometer. We can use it under the surface in the water, or because we're only in 11 feet of water, we're actually going to place it in the boat. We're looking for a large uh, metal object, such as a car. So we're looking for a difference in reading of like 1,500 to like 4,000 for our spikes. 
and this will read for that roughly 30 feet deep is what we're looking for. So anyway, it's gonna work out just fine just by sitting in the boat. And do you want this equipment down in the front, like both of these down forward? Oh, I'll, I'll show you how you do it. So now it's all going. Now I'm gonna go out in the middle, away from all this metal, and I'm going to retune my system for the magnetometer settings for this area and the amount of metal that's around. Okay. And then once I do that, then I'll be over that target, seeing if I have what it is that may be a potential target. Okay. Our alarm is set for any change over 500, so that's when we're going to get an alarm change. to recenter my graph here. Don't do that. All right. Let's go over my target area. And I'm getting nothing. So that leads me to believe it's just the tires that are down there. I'll go over it several different directions here just to make sure that we cover the entire area. Where these green dots are at, that's where it's registering every two seconds, which is our polarity change of 500 or more will give us a red dot. We'll just kind of work it back and forth about every five feet or so. All right, that's clear. Yeah, I got absolutely uh, nothing there. The only thing was just a uh, picked up on the motors I was turning and picked up speed at one point other than that the tires only okay I'll uh I'll make my way down there back in the back in the trailer yeah yeah let's back it in we'll pack it up here and then we'll see if there's another location or two this might be the last one so we'll see this because I'm going to share this with the family also Byron as to what we've been doing yeah one more thing that we wanted to t possibly take a look at that the niece was mentioning mm -hmm. well let's just look at that pond let me see if I can find the exact lower bay road has just simply like that was shallow to begin with so I'm more led to believe that in my opinion it was already shallow and it's just been filling in over time. So, I mean, I'm not really sold on that idea. I mean, it, looks, it looked like it was really shallow to begin with as well. Um, so, yeah, let me, let me entertain the idea that he went back over here. And let's go put the boat in right here mm -hmm. and check all of this. Yeah, so it's like 1.8 miles across the bridge from here to here. Uh -huh. Now, with these bridges, from my experience, right it's not like light. an area where we found somebody over a bridge before. The ones where we found somebody over the bridge was a lot lower. This is like a good three to four feet high yeah. versus a lower guardrail. Or like a Antonio where they like plow the snow up against it. But you have a side, you have two double guardrails on this one. In two and a half miles. So. Log in through that. Yeah. Billy Burr. Got a boat under there. Right there's a boat upside down. Sunk. So here's the bridge accent location, not deep enough though, only four, 3.9 feet, four feet. And there's our first hole right here, seven feet deep. 
little hole right there. And then it comes back up. That was it. All right, see we're deep enough here now, six to seven feet. The bridge and the road is right there, and then we got another bridge that's coming up here. Yeah, it's getting shallow here though. Three feet, two and a half feet. See, if it was deep enough at this bridge, I would deem a great accident location. Just very little guardrail. The guardrail's at the very end of the bridge, and you could absolutely come off here, other side, both sides. Just not deep enough though. All right, so we're coming up the road. This, this one, I feel like we're getting too far away from the road right here. But if we come up just a little bit further, there's one more potential location. It looks like, like an old park or something with a walking trail where you could potentially drop off into the water there. So let's go double check that area. See if it gets deep by chance. And then I think what I'm gonna do, the family really is pushing for us to check this pond in question. I feel like it's just way too far out of the way. Part of it's been filled in over time and I don't feel like there was like a real um, any way for a vehicle to get into it. So we'll pull it up on the computer, we'll double check like the Wayback Machine and see, kind of get a gauge for it. And we might jump over there. Here's the edge of the park. We're starting to get a little deeper. We're hitting six foot now. Over here on the uh, left side of the boat. Yeah, way too shallow. One and a half feet. Like, I might even bottom out. It's getting so shallow. Foot and a half. Woo! Yeah, that's that's it for this little section. Nada, huh? Nothing over there. Okay. We had like one small hole that was over six feet, but most of it, two and a half, three and a half feet, some four. Okay. So we'll jump on the computer real quick and analyze that area more for that pond in question. So 98, that's as far back as it goes. It goes to 85, but it's not showing me anything there. So come into 98. If I hold my finger there, and then I go to 2002, and then let's come up to 2012, 2015, 2019, 2020's last one. So pretty much that area was available just on the south side doesn't look like anything on the north side. So the only area of interest is gonna be right here in this area. Mm -hmm. And that all of this, in fact, let me just hold my finger on that tree right there. I'm interested in that tree. Because the tree was growing up and out and a tree is only gonna grow if it's so shallow. Mm -hmm. And so for that reason, see that's the same tree. Mm -hmm. So you are only two and a half, three feet max in there, this area. So if something went in there, it would have been visible. I have zero reason to do this other than for the family right now because it's been bothering them. Yeah, they keep asking too. So I think just to clear, it's gonna really give them peace of mind. Yeah. To have you go scan it. Yeah, so we'll call this. Last search location. Last search location for family. Okay. All right, let me call her and let her know we'll be over there in just a few minutes. But yeah, it looks like it drops off. I wonder when they um, scanned it, how deep it was. Don't know, you want me to just throw a bobber in and chuck it out there and see? No, we'll put the boat in because we, we got to search the whole thing anyway. Okay. 
So, I mean, it, it looks like it drops off a little bit, so I'm not quite sure. Okay, we got something to the right, right there. So we'll go double check that. Yeah, it's eight feet deep out here. That's not a car there. Uh, and and uh, who I have on the phone here, man? My aunt, the one who's been contacting y'all. <laughs> hey there, ma'am. I'm Byron. Hi, Byron. This is Alicia. How are you? Hey, Alicia. Good. So, tell me a little bit about the side that is covered up now. Um, what have you heard, or um, why is that covered up over there? Um, there was a guy. Actually, he's probably about my age. When they were all teenagers growing up. They always swam in that hole, and the owners and stuff used to throw old, um, they always said a car was in that pond. Uh-huh. They said the car was in the pond, and they was throwing old wash machines and dryers and refrigerators to fill up mm -hmm. that spot in the back where the car is supposed to be, and then it was covered up with dirt. You're thinking that possibly... The car might be underneath the appliances, which is now underneath that dirt. Yes. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, and, and unfortunately, our equipment can't go through that. You know, we're we're sonar, which works in water only. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, we're just hoping that if it's in here, it's going to be, uh, you know, where the water is. Yeah. Oh, what is that? Let's come back over that. I don't think it was a car, but we'll double check that as well. That looked too round to be a car. Yeah, that's yeah, that's too round it's sticking up right there. But then we got this right here, but I don't think so. But let's double check those. Cause I would think that over the years, with the lack of access to that side and that side, if anything it would be right in this area if we had anything. See, I got something right here that I'm really interested in. Right back here. See right here? I'm interested in that. Off to the left over here. And so I don't know if it's a exit pump. Or what I might have right there. So let me just double check that. Yeah, it's too shallow there. Right, right there. So what, what is that right there? See that? I think it's just the way those trees are coming out of there. A lot of fish in here. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely won't go hungry in here. And that right there is not the right shape. Those are just two logs laying down. You can actually see the shadow underneath of it there. But I'll come across it the other way just to verify. Again, right about here. Yeah, so you can see it's a tree log that way. Another log that way. That's not big enough there. That's not wide enough there. Yeah, and that's just a tree right there. Okay. All right. I'm satisfied. You? Yeah. Nothing in there, Brianna. Yeah. Um, I was looking at the, here, I'll, I'll come chat with you over there. Um, so I've got the computer. Let me go over some of the stuff that, um, you know, where we searched today. As far as the lake here, when I was looking at the aerials earlier today mm -hmm. from like 98, this, this area over here, you had this tree right here that has always been sticking out to the farthest left. Anytime the trees are sticking out, normally your water is no, no deeper than three feet. 
and in looking at the land through the years as it was drying up it only appeared to be you know anywhere, anywhere from one to three feet throughout this area okay. that leads me to believe that we don't have anything happening as far as oh we have a car that was in there and it was intentionally covered up okay. i feel as though if a car was there it would have been exposed and somebody would have known about it so when i you know came out before we came out my suspicion was that this side was going to be deeper and that the other side would be much shallower and sure enough over there it's only about three feet deep in this area right here you're looking at about eight feet deep you have a couple of logs down there um, but nothing that would indicate anything over 18 inches tall we're looking for a vehicle that's going to at least still be in a still body of water like this even after 30 years no salt water it's still going to be three to four feet above for the shape of the vehicle that it was okay. so but let me let's jump over to the computer real quick and let me just share all that with you okay. what i have is i actually have this i can just share um, with your family being that y'all ruled out pretty much everything accidental or like you know if he was drunk driving if that's kind of out the window in yeah. a sense yeah in in my opinion yes this is no longer an accident with him coming home from the bar now, you know, he's married at the time. Sounds like he was just out with friends. Did he have another friend that he might have been going over to? Did he have a family member he might have been going over to and he never made it to that location? You still have accident locations that are possible. Yeah. But where is that going to be now, now that we've ruled out what's within the five mile radius that's an accident location? Yeah, everybody I think is right here in Claremont Harbor. Yeah. I'm just thankful y'all were able to do what y'all did today because it answers a lot of questions. It doesn't leave us wondering about all this water. <laughs> Good. Any other questions? Anything else I can do for you? I don't think so. Annalisa, you got any questions? No, but I appreciate everything they have done today. I appreciate everything. You're welcome. And like I said, you know, we'll have this out. It could be up to, you know, eight to 12 months before this one comes out. But, you know, we'll, the, we'll put the message out there for people to be, you know, aware of this and to help spread awareness for you. And, you know, get look it out there to, you know, 100,000, 200,000, 300,000 people. And, you know, maybe somebody that watches it will, you know, see something, say something. And, and it's happened before where we've been able to get a clue and come back and solve it for you. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome.